Welcome back to the channel guys. The Xiaomi 17 Pro just landed, all right? This is the box, a rather peculiar and a rather huge box. One of the first phones with the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Lit Gen 5. Yes, it's a Lit and also Gen 5. I'm gonna explain later on why. Last year, Qualcomm debuted with the Snapdragon 8 Lit with the custom Orion core and this thing here is taking it to the next stage. Why I'm so excited? The Xiaomi 17 Pro isn't just a regular phone, right? It's a regular phone with a display on the back, which is something I'm going to also be focusing on. The Xiaomi 17 series debuted on the 25th of September, so I'm very happy to have this unit. This is the 17 Pro. There is also a bigger version, the 17 Pro Max, which I will also hopefully get in the next two weeks, guys. This is 6.3 inches, 6,200 milliampere of a battery, 100 watts charging and then also 50 watts wireless charging. The Xiaomi 17 Pro comes with a triple camera setup. So we have a 50 megapixel main camera, a 50 megapixel 5x optical zoom camera, and of course the 50 megapixel ultra wide. This baby here also comes with Android 16 and HypoOS version 3, and I'm really, really thrilled to test it against iOS 26 and the betas, and of course against One UI 8 and One UI 8.5 and the Pixel UI that I also have. So let's put this baby on my review table and let's unbox it. I got this from Trading Gen Chen. I'm gonna leave a link down below in the video, guys. Now let's put this baby on my unbox table and let's start. Back at the review table, the first thing that I noticed, this is a huge box. You can just check, like this is my hand. To give you another perspective, this is the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, this is the even smaller box that I have from my Pixel 10 Pro. And of course, there are a lot of reasons for that. Yeah, the charger is included. Xiaomi 17 Pro co-engineered with Leica, and this is the version with 16 gigabytes of RAM and also half a terabyte of storage. Now let's unbox. And now we know why this is a huge box. So here, I guess we have the phone underneath. Yep charging accessories, Xiaomi co-engineered with Leica. Nice surprise, case included. This isn't soft plastic, guys. It's hard plastic. Let's open the charging accessories. Yeah, 100 watts, guys, to be able to power the massive 6,000 and 300 milliampere hour battery. 100 watts watt charging, guys. This also supports 50 watts wireless charging and 22.5 reverse wireless. And of course, a nice cable is included with the Xiaomi red tips. And now, without any further ado, let's check the main star, all right. This is the favorite part in doing YouTube videos, guys. Unboxing the new products, okay? What a beautiful green color. Besides the green color, there is also white, purple, green, and black, but I got the green one. This thing here is the new camera layout, and I know everybody's waiting on this to so just get to see the display, but guys, here we do have also the main camera, the main white camera, which is 50 megapixel with an aperture of 1.7, of course, with iOS. Down below, we do have the telephoto camera. It's again 50 megapixel with an aperture of 3.0, again, optically stabilized. And by the way, the 17 Pro Max has a better aperture, a bigger one with an F of 2.6. And guys, yeah, this thing here is the ultra wide camera, aperture of 2.4 and again, 50 megapixel. All right, if I turn the phone like this, we see the antenna, that's the volume rocker. All right, that's the power button. Again, some antennas here. The left side, absolutely clear. Down below, we do have the speaker, the USB-C, and also, of course, the SIM tray with the microphone. Let's check something very important as I'm trying to put my SIM inside because this phone has IP68, so dust tight and water resistant, and you can put it in water up to four meters for 30 minutes. Of course, don't do this. But what I wanted to check is the SIM card tray slot, if I'm able to find any rubber. And yeah, I am, you can see this black thing here. Yeah, full rubber, this is good. Let me enter my SIM card. As you can see, this is a beautiful display. It measures 6.3 inches, guys, LTPO AMOLED. 2160 hertz PWM, which is very important if you have problems, you know, with eye strain. 120 hertz Dolby Vision HDR, guys, HDR 10 plus, and it can go up to 3500 nits peak brightness, which is, yeah, amazing. But, you know, before I show you more of the phone, let's just go to the back. And this play is also supposed to go up to 3500 uh, nits peak brightness, which is just amazing. And, it's a whole other story like why we have a display here and do we need it and is this a gimmick or not. Xiaomi Hyper OS. The version is 3.0.9.0 and what I love about those devices is that I just take them out of the box and boom, it's gonna be like already an update to install. 
with a system security patch to October. Right now, I'm not gonna install it to be able to test it directly out of the box. What is the deal with the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, guys? Because remember last year, the highest tier chip from Qualcomm was just Snapdragon 8 Elite. Here is the deal. The Elite means that this is the top tier chip from Qualcomm. It's above the standard gen models. And the Gen 5 actually marks the fifth generation of the 8 series flagship. So it's not skipping, it's just kind of leveling up. Remember, we had the 8 Gen 1, 8 Gen 2, 8 Gen 3, then we have the Snapdragon 8 Elite. And now technically this is really like the Gen 5 generation. So this one should have faster CPU, faster GPU, next gen AI power, also a new ISP for pro-grade camera processing and Wi-Fi. 7. Let's try to check some more tech specs. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 Elite comes with like two clusters that are running at 4.61 GHz, the big ones, this is crazy, and six little one running at 3.63 GHz. The GPU inside is again Qualcomm, it's Adreno 840. Okay, system-wise, Android 16, Hyperweight version 3. The screen measures 6.3 inches with 2656 by 1220 which is a very very nice resolution and as you can see it supports everything hdr10 plus hdr10 hlg double vision the memory on this unit is 16 gigabytes and the storage is half a terabyte ufs 4.1 some words about the cameras the main wide camera 50 megapixel i do believe it's omnivision 950l is the light hunter the telephone lens that is 5x optical zoom is provided by samsung samsung s5 kgn5 and guys last but not least the ultra wide lens is also provided by omnivision so we have a triple camera setup 50 megapixel each and remember the bigger 70 pro max version has a slightly better telephoto camera the battery inside this monster using the latest silicon carbon technology 6300 milliampere hopefully this is gonna get us through the day and probably also more all right guys now i am back on the screen and i'm just looking at this phone and it's absolutely beautiful i'm gonna put a white background for you just take a look at those bezels they are crazy thin it's really absolutely crazy just for comparison purposes guys i'm gonna put here my pixel 10 pro all right so you can just see right so those are both pro phones this is the one from google it's the google 10 pro and yeah as you can see it has a slightly uh, bigger bezels this thing here is absolutely gorgeous and as we're here let's check the display settings this is usually something that i check first why because most of the time those phones are not set up to use the highest display settings and if you pay this type of money you will really want to get the best out of it so what do you have here guys we have a refresh rate that is the default one which is the recommended it can go up 120 hertz we have also something called Adaptive Refresh Rate Pro. Get more refresh rate options and switch dimming from DC to PVM. This is something that I would like to switch on. Hopefully this is going to help me reducing eye strains. I don't see an option for the resolution, so I hope that this is using the highest one. And now back to the home screen. All right, Hyper OS version three, guys. I just wanna check some things. All right, it looks very much like the previous one. All right, here my notifications. Here, guys, are uh, my quick panel. But I know that there's gonna be some new things for me to explore. Uh, let's try to check uh, the wallpaper and the lock screen. Beautiful, all right. Here, guys, you can just see like how effortless and how smooth this thing operates. It's absolutely crazy. Now, let me show you something cool. This device uses an ultrasonic fingerprint read scanner as the previous one. And this is blazingly fast, guys. I'm now training it with my other thumb and you can see this thing is absolutely gorgeous. This is so fast. It really works like magic, works all the time. And I really hope that the scanning area is just large enough. But as you can see, yeah, I'm able to unlock it absolutely with no efforts. What happens when I go to the left? I'm gonna get the standard up vault. Not a lot of Chinese things, which is something I like. All right, here I have my home screen. By default, guys, you're gonna get something like this, which is something I will not really like. So uh, what I wanna get here is my up drawer. So I'm gonna click inside settings, click on more, and then there's gonna be home screen, all right? That this is the classic one, but then I'm gonna use the one with the up drawer. Right, scroll bar and place new apps on the home screen so now guys i'm gonna have 
everything here and then boom also a standard app drawer which is going to group all the applications based on their type like comps entertainment and stuff like this so honestly guys hypos is very customizable and of course i'm going to be doing a lot of videos comparing this to ios 26 to one year 8 and one year 8.5 and also to the pixel ui and of course with all the other phones that i get now let's start the camera for the first time all right i'm gonna allow this Okay, wow, we need to download new watermarks. Let's try to see, it's gonna be like a custom loading animation every time you start the camera. Super moon shots in photo mode. Zoom in 20x more and the AI will detect the moon and capture. All right, I'm not sure if this is going to be liked by everybody out there, but it's there. Shoot in ultra HD in photo mode. Switch between resolutions while taking photos. 50 megapixel is the max this phone can do. Rear display live preview. Toggle the switch at the top left corner to let others see a live preview while you're taking their photo, which is, again, something probably nice. And then, guys, here we do have the camera, all right? So the ultra wide is 0.7. All right, you can see, Blazik. All right, this is the 1X. Again, 2X, which I guess is a crop from the main camera. 5X is for sure a real optical zoom and we have 10x how close can we get yeah up to 120 this is the front camera also 50 megapixel and it's able to shoot photos with an aperture of 2.2 and you can see it's also kind of quick enough all right this is fast shot slow motion time lapse long exposure there are a lot of things that i'm going to explore in the next days and making sure that I'm able to produce a full review for this phone. And now it's time for some photo samples, starting with 5X. This is the 10X photo. Then I'm going to engage with the 30X. The next level of zoom is 60X. And of course, the last one, 120X. And another set of examples, again, starting with the 5X optical zoom, 10X straight from the optical camera, going to 30X, and of course, then also 60X and 120X. And this is the audio recorded by the Xiaomi 70 Pro microphone. Something that I wanted to check with you guys. I've started something from Spotify. This is Netflix. And of course, I'm going to have it here. All right, here as well. I want to see what happens on the back. Oh, okay. This is good. So we can potentially use this as a media player. And maybe that's a use case that people will kind of like, because right now, guys, it's kind of a limited in terms of notification. Something that is also working on the back of the small screen, let me share, if I am to open the clock, and if I am to start a timer, I will have the timer here, all right? And yeah, we have Xiaomi implementation of Dynamic Island. All right, so this is now my player. This is my timer here. And guys, I'm gonna have it here as well, but I have to double tap to really see the timer itself when the time is going down this whole bar is going to drop as well and i think it looks kind of cool also what you can do from here right you can go back to your main screen what happens right now if i am to resume the music so now let's have the music this is the back screen all right this is my timer now there is another dot here so okay now i'm gonna have also access to the media player and I kind of like the fact that when I'm changing all the songs, it's going to change also the background. And besides this, guys, the other big thing right now that really works is the camera. What happens when I open the camera from here? That's the back camera, guys. Right, you can see the camera is going to be closed on the main screen. And for me to switch back, I need to swipe. And now I can access the camera from the front of my phone. What happens when I go here? All right, you see right now it's blocked. So I need to unlock it again and then I can close it. All right, I have my timer here, one swipe up. At the moment, this is a bit limited as those live notifications that are supposed to be here do not really work outside of China, but who knows? Uh, if they're planning to roll this phone globally, maybe you're gonna get support here as well. This thing is pretty nice. I'm probably gonna stick with this. And guys, if you're interested into the Xiaomi 17 Pro, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check some of my next videos. What is new in Hypo OS 3? Besides the fact that they also try to add some glass elements, we can see them here they change a lot of the system icons they also changed the icons here in the status bar even when i go inside the gallery you can see they try to add some glass effects but it's not a real-time rendered glass effect like in apple maybe that's better for the resources so there are plenty of new things in hypoos version 3. all right it's time for benchmarks and i just finished the m2 and i want to give you guys the temps so 45.6 all right 45.9 and uh, let's try to see what happens on the back yeah 43 42 so the phone is really getting hot i will have to let it cool down before i start a tree mark and before that i also tested geekbench so this is my first ever geekbench 6 result 
3,296 on the single core score and 9,815 on the multi-core score, which is slightly better than what I used to have on the S25 Ultra running the Snapdragon 8 OLED. Honestly, I'd expect a bit more, but still, that's a good upgrade versus the previous generation. Also, I was able to test the CPDT, and in terms of writing speeds and reading speeds and random write, this thing is a beast. But okay, UFS 4.1, that's kind of clear. You can see all the numbers here. This is the quickest available storage on the market right now. I will leave the phone to cool down a bit before I start the tree mark. The phone is running right now with 32.2 Celsius, which I believe is quite okay for a round of the Wildlife Extreme. In a separate video, I'm also going to run the Wildlife Extreme stress test because guys, yeah, Xiaomi has some history with this. It's not always able to survive 20 rounds of this particular test, but in this video, because that's hands-on and first impressions, I only wanna see like the scores that I'm gonna be getting out of just one loop. But do expect a video soon where I'm gonna be diving into some more advanced benchmarking. The biggest question is, can this phone survive 20 rounds of the 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Test running on the standard profile, which is the balance right now. When you go inside the settings in battery, you're gonna have performance options, which will take a lot of your battery and cause even more heat, but then you're getting the best out of the best in terms of performance, but for how long? Yeah, this is something we'll need to understand, all right? 5,459, that is not that bad with an average frame rate of 32.69. But what is interesting is to see how long can the phone survive uh, this score or a score that are closer to this score and how much this phone is going to throttle. Now let's check the GPS test. I just did that outside and it was really stunningly fast, guys. In like two seconds, I was able to get almost like 82 satellites. You can see 82 satellites and I think a nice accuracy. So far, this is very optimistic. Also, what I wanna test is the network speed while I'm using 5G. So for that, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to stop my Wi-Fi. All right, let's start a test. Okay. 23 milliseconds speeding. Ooh, not that bad. Okay, this is actually very good. I'm inside in my office where I don't have the best coverage, but almost 700 Mbps for download, even more, which I think is quite acceptable. So almost 700 Mbps for download and 65 Mbps for upload. This is a China version only at the moment, guys. So you're probably not getting all the bands, but you should get a good coverage using this phone outside of China. This is what I'm doing right now. Time for some charging, guys. I will connect it now to the 100 watts big charger. All right, quick charge. <laughs> 100 watts connected, guys. You can see, right? This thing is gonna fill your battery in no time. 100 watts charging, charging up to 30% faster than usual. And I can even hit the boost here, right? This thing here is brand new, did not exist in HypeOS 2. There are also a lot of new things down below. Of course, we have the depth effect. Those are things that I'm going to test in depth in some of my other videos, guys. So then again, if you're interested, subscribe to the channel, guys, to not miss those things. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. VST over and bye.